Welcome back to 30 Days of Lightroom. I'm JT and we are here in Adobe Lightroom Classic and this video is going to be all about split toning. So we have our split toning tab here in the right hand corner and as I stress in most of these videos I really like to work top from bottom. I think there is a reason these tabs are in this order here. I do my basic toning. I'll do a little contrast, addition, or subtraction with my tone curve. You can see I added just a touch of contrast to this image. We'll close this tone curve tab and I'll do a little bit of color editing if I need to. And then split toning is where you can get really creative, add some unique color grading and some looks to your images. And let's go ahead, let's turn this off for right now. Here's what the original toned image looks like. I think that looked pretty cool but I wanted to take this image a little bit further, turn that back on and add kind of a vintage, almost sepia look to this image. And I couldn't really get that by just messing with the white balance. I had to do some editing to the highlights. You can see the highlights on the nose and the skin tones and then warm up those shadows and make the shadows kind of red and a little bit eerie. So it has this kind of vintage horror feel to it. And I like this look and I was able to achieve it with split toning. So you can see my highlights are blue and my shadows are red. Now that's not something I can achieve just by warming up my images white balance. I actually have to adjust the highlights and the shadows separately. So again, let's turn this off and you can see we cooled down our highlights and we warmed up our shadows. That is the fun part about split toning. You can individually edit highlights and shadows. So let's say I want to make my shadows warm as well. You can see I can go through and I can move this hue slider and I can change my highlights to whatever color I would like. Let's go back to the kind of cool color that we had, 195, and then I can choose how much saturation I want in the image. I can really go overboard, turn that saturation way up, or I can add just a hint of saturation, but I wanted to compete with those warm shadows a little bit, so I really had to bring up the saturation of my highlights. And then I chose some red shadows, but I could choose some blue shadows. That looks kind of neutral and kind of like our before image. I can make my shadows kind of greenish, like I was shooting, say, with Fujifilm, or I was using a fluorescent light with a film camera, or I can really warm up those shadows. And I really like kind of that red that I had to begin with. That looks pretty good. And then I can really go overboard and crank those red shadows. That's a bit too much or bring them down. So let's go back to where we had them before. That looks pretty good. And now we have our balance slider in the middle. You can decide whether you want your highlights to really come through or you want your shadows to take precedent and you want that hue in the shadows to really stick out. I typically leave the balance right there at zero. I have most of the control I need right with my saturation slider and balance is kind of unnecessary in my opinion, but you can use it if you need to. So the split toning is a great way to again, stylize your image. And the one other cool thing about using the split toning tool is if I hit V on the keyboard, to turn my image black and white. Split toning is one of the few color tools that still works when your image is black and white. So let's go ahead, let's turn up our shadows and you can see we can get a really unique look. Maybe I make my shadows kind of bluish greenish, get kind of an eerie, maybe like a matrix feel to it. Maybe I want my highlights to be a certain color. We can go for just kind of a stylistic look just by playing with this kind of a sepia toned image here. Got to play with it just a little bit and make it just the way you want it. So that's a kind of cool sepia tone image. Again, it's awesome that this works when your image is in black and white mode. Again, that was what the color would look like, but in black and white, we can do some kind of cool things. I might turn up that saturation, warm up our shadows just a touch, make a little more red. And that's kind of a neat look as well. So that is how you use split toning. Those are some of the cool properties of the split toning tool, especially that it works with black and white images. So check out the split toning tool, play around with it a little bit, experiment. And I typically find the best results are when your highlights and shadows are complementary. For example, I have some warm highlights and 
I have some cool shadows. Now this works best when your image is in full color. Really warm up those highlights and cool down our shadows. Or we can do the opposite like we had to begin with and we can really cool our highlights and get those nice warm shadows. I'm very happy with the way this image turned out thanks to a little help from split toning. Again, here's the original toned image and just adding a little bit of a look to it with split toning. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more of my 30 days of Lightroom tutorials, and until next time, get out and go shoot.